breaking down now what we could see over the next few weeks, namely the potential legal challenges to the election that could happen in the weeks ahead. University of Toledo Constitutional Law Professor Rebecca Zitlow joins us now. And Dr. Zitlow, a federal judge ordered mail service and law enforcement to find some 300,000 ballots that couldn't be traced. The USPS disregarded that order. Could there be a court challenge over this? Uh, yes, it definitely could be. I mean, um, it's very unusual for a, an official to simply say to a federal judge, uh, no, we're not going to follow your order. Now, they didn't quite say it that way. They said, oh, I'm sure the judge doesn't expect us to turn heaven and earth, basically. But the problem is that not finding those ballots in a very short amount of time could have meant that some of the ballots didn't get in um, in time for the um, deadlines in the states that they're in. Um, and so if those states and their Michigan, the states are Michigan and Pennsylvania, come in very close, I could imagine continued litigation about those ballots uh, and challenges if the states refuse to accept them uh, because they came in late because the Postal Service didn't follow the judge's order. What are some of the other legal arguments that either side could make? Well, another uh, case that's sort of pending out there, um, it's been actually been up to the Supreme Court a couple of times, is also about the Pennsylvania ballots, those absentee ballots uh, received after Election Day, um, and whether the state can count them or not. Um, the Republican uh, Party challenged the um, Secretary of State's order that they could be counted. Um, it went up to the Supreme Court twice, of the Uni United States Supreme Court twice, the United States Supreme Court rejected that argument, uh, but Justice Alito indicated that he at least might be willing to see the case again. Um, and this time uh, we would have the uh, new Justice Amy Coney Barrett potentially deciding the case. So again, if Pennsylvania is extremely close, expect to hear more litigation about those absentee ballots that come in uh, that are postmarked by today, but don't actually aren't received with um, are received after election day within the three days after election. And, and do you see a, a scenario like we saw in 2000 where the Supreme Court actually does decide this race? Well, I've been saying all along that I hope not, and I still do hope not. Um, I don't think it's a good, um, it's good for the, the Supreme Court, the, for federal courts to decide political races like this. Um, but it's looking very close and it could come down to Pennsylvania. Um, and so it's possible we could have another Bush v. Gore type scenario. All right, Dr. Rebecca. I hope not. Yeah, <laughs> you and uh, most of the country, I imagine. Yes. Dr. Zitlow, thanks so much as always for your insight and thanks for being with us tonight. And uh, hopefully we won't be talking to you in the future about more legal challenges. Take care. Indeed. <laughs> you too. Thank you. Uh, get us up to yes. speed on the USPS. Where could we, could we see some court action on that? Yes, uh, the, the lawsuit is still ongoing. The judge still has jurisdiction over the case. He's already told the Postal Service they need to come back and explain their actions. Um, it's looking very close in both Michigan and Pennsylvania, so I assume that this litigation is going to continue, and the judge will continue to demand that the post office find the ballots. All right. In his statement to his supporters very early this morning at the White House, the president used the words major fraud when talking about the elections process. Now, at this point, there's no evidence of any foul play, uh, just uncounted votes. The race being called too close to call, even by the Associated, uh, the Associated Press. So what legal uh, ground could he have to stand on there? And do you see a scenario in which the presidential race might be decided by the Supreme Court? I don't see any ground. Uh, there's no, been no evidence of fraud, um, or certainly of widespread fraud, really no evidence of fraud at all. Um, and the president can't just declare victory. Um, uh, no one can just declare victory. It depends on the voters. Um, I don't see any, uh, any legal basis at all for halting counting of ballots that were uh, cast by Election Day. The only question is um, whether the ballots that are cast after Election Day in uh, Pennsylvania um, and Wisconsin, uh, where the law, law allows that. Um, there's been a challenge in Pennsylvania, uh, also in Wisconsin. I think that's where we'll see the litigation. As you were watching the returns come in last night and into the early morning hours, we know you were with us uh, this last evening as well. What were things that were sticking out to you based on your knowledge and experience? Things that anything surprised you about the process and the way things were proceeding last night? 
Well, it didn't surprise me because we knew this was going to happen, but still experiencing it is awful, awfully tough. I mean, we knew we're going to have to wait longer. So many people voted early, and states differ as to uh, how they count the ballots, when they start counting the ballots. Um, so we see um, returns coming in, and we don't know exactly what they mean because we don't know which ballots have been counted yet. And there have been a lot of projections about which way the early votes weighs versus the day of voting. So again, it all comes down to counting every single ballot and just waiting for that to happen. Rebecca Zitlow, exactly. constitutional law professor from UT, joining us live this morning once again for a little insight. We do appreciate that. Thank you.